This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Big week in the sports world coming up because it is not just NFL week number eight, not just college football, NBA, and NHL, but the World Series is coming up this week. We got the Phillies and the Astros set to square off. We're going to break down the World Series with Rob Friedman pitching in to get his thoughts on both sides and also take my first look at NFL week number eight. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here one last Last time by Rob Friedman. Check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. Find his work at Fox, MLB, Peacock, and Nesson. And Rod, Rob, it's bittersweet to have you on for one last time, but we could talk about a really fun series. I know you got to wipe the tears away. I, I I agree for sure. But what better way to, t- to go out than talking about a fun series between two teams that I have a lot of fun watching? Absolutely. I think it is. It, I think it hopefully will be a fun series and a culmination of a great season. Absolutely. And I think that it's been fun to track the progression of these things, because obviously the Phillies had their struggles to open off the year and made a managerial change. And I think that you kind of always knew this talent was in there, just wasn't really shining. And whether that was variance, maybe it was managerial stuff. I don't really know what it was, but they're facing a tough opponent now in the Houston Astros. They faced a lot of tough opponents in the postseason already, but just from a, a broad perspective, What's your overall view of this series, Astros and Phillies? I think it's it's depth is is the big differentiator between these mm-hmm. teams. I think at the top, it, there's not that much of a difference, but as you go deeper and deeper, um, and in this you know seven game format, you need you need some depth, and it depends on how things play out. But I think that's the biggest difference I see on paper. Yeah, I think that that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, you kind of just have to hope the Phillies, they didn't have to test that depth very much in the NLCS. And that was kind of a big thing for them there, but they will have to test that here. So let's talk about uh, these two rotations first, and we'll talk about the bullpens. You talked about the depth. Is the depth in the rotation the key area where the Phillies may lag behind? Because, I mean, Astros are kind of loaded in that regard, which does position them pretty well. Is this the area where the depth to you is most apparent? Yeah, I think it's on both sides. I think it's in starting rotation and the bullpen, but definitely in the starting rotation. I think that, again, the top two can match anybody. I mean, Nolan, Wheeler, Yeah, I mean, there's not a team that they're going to be overmatched against. It's as you get deeper and deeper, when you're talking about a three and four, that could be a one and two in anybody else's rotation. That's tough. Like McCullers is legitimately one of the filthiest pitchers in the American League. And uh, as you saw, Javier is borderline unhittable at times and you know then you have valdez and verlander i mean what do you do that's tough who do you think has the edge let's top two you know i i would probably put valdez and verlander top two for the for the astros we know the phillies top two are do the phillies have a slight edge there because i think they kind of need an edge in that regard in order to have a leg up for the series because they're in houston for those two games like that's that's pretty tough do you give them an edge there or is it just a complete complete wash it's pretty close between those like obviously wheeler's been pitching great and he may be pitching the best out of all out of everybody Mm -hmm. um you know nola's had his ups and downs at nola's best he's one of the best pitchers in the major league so depends what nola shows up verlander obviously had a monster year and it'd be hard to say anybody is better than him. Like he may, you know, stat wise be the best pitcher in baseball. Yeah. And then Fromber with his, what was it? 25 consecutive uh, quality starts. It's hard to say anybody has an edge over that. Like, you yeah. know, one of the best curveballs in the game. That's fun. That matchup is really good. And I think that what's most fun as like a baseball fan is that all four of those guys are pitching like in the second half of the year, it seemed like they all found another level. Like they were all, I mean, they were all good the whole year, but like, it seemed like they all found an extra level. And that was pretty fun just to watch and to see those first two matchups. But the bullpens matter a lot too. And we talked to the Phillies bullpen entering that Padres series and they've been a lot better. They've been a lot better than they were, but is the gap between them and the Astros big enough now to make a huge difference in the way you view this series? It depends. Like if your starting pitchers do your job, it can hand it to the bo- to, to the back two for the Phillies. You know, the, I, I don't know who's much better than Sir Anthony Dominguez and, and, and Jose Alvarado as far as stuff. Like yeah. those guys are elite pitchers and 
you know, you're seeing the message here, the top two in the rotation, top two in the bullpen, they can match up with anybody. And the question is how deep you have to dig in a seven game series, because the Astros bullpen has so many pieces, so many pieces that it's, you know, they can afford to have a bad outing by one guy or not have somebody available because someone else can pick it up. The Phillies have less of that luxury. doesn't mean the feel like, you know, who knows the, the Phillies could, hit on all cylinders and if their guys do their jobs and constantly are you know doing it they're they're as good it's when you dig a little deeper that they may not be yeah and i think that that's something that will show up if as the series goes series goes along as you alluded to earlier on as well now one of the complicating factors here is that bryce harper seems to be playing out of his mind right now if you're a pitcher i'm putting you out there uh how are you handling a guy who is a, as a baseline, as good as Bryce Harper, but B, playing just unconscious baseball right now. He's so good. He's a fun dude to watch um, and, and can be a tough guy to pitch to. I mean, you're going to have to make very little mistakes when you when you pitch against him. And if when in doubt, don't give him anything to hit, put him on. Like, you know, it's that seems to be a pretty good strategy. It was the Jordan strategy early on, yeah. too. At the, when he's on fire, don't pitch to him. Get him away. But there are ways and, and uh, you know, I trust the veterans of the Astros staff to go at him smartly. Yeah. That's one of the big differences is they've been in this yeah. situation before. So uh, f- fewer mistakes and, you know, I, I think a lower heartbeat may be able to, to beat it, but God, he, he's so much fun to watch. Oh, he is. And you said when your Don's on fire, which is kind of his baseline too. Like that's just, it is his, yeah. his regular state. <laughs> right. Oh, definitely. All right. Well, I got to get your prediction, Rob. Right now, the Astros are minus 190 to win this series over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The Phillies are plus 165. Chips are on the table, Rob. Who you got winning the World Series here in 2022? Well, I had the Astros going to the World Series. Um, I had them losing to the Braves, which is not a thing anymore. And uh, my instincts are the Astros are the better team. It doesn't mean the Phillies can't win. I would pick the Astros, but... I'm hoping for a good series and it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see the Phillies stay hot. Yeah, they definitely could. And like you said, with those two, those two guys at the top rotation, I think that gives us decent odds of having a fun series and the Phillies have just been, you know, white hot so far. So who's to say that won't continue in this series against Houston should be a really fun one. That is Rob Friedman. Check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. Find his work at MLB, Peacock, Fox, and Nesson. And Rob, like I said, it's just been a pleasure to have you on all throughout uh, this entire this entire past couple of months. Enjoy the World Series and hopefully we get to talk to you once again next year for more some more baseball in the spring. Absolutely. I am looking forward to it. It's been great. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Rob. Appreciate it. And just enjoy, uh, smoke some more ribs and, uh, enjoy the baseball as it goes along. (laughs) Thanks. All righty. That was Rob Freeman. Check him out on Twitter at pitching ninja. And again, find all of his awesome work at uh, Fox MLB Peacock Ness. And just a delight to have him on throughout this entire time. We're going to break down my first look at NFL week number eight here in just one second. But first NBA season is underway and it's the perfect time to download FanDuel Sportsbook America's number one sportsbook, because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in free bets. If your first bet doesn't win, FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. You can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. Plus, with live betting, you'll get updated odds on games that have already started. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So download FanDuel today to get your no-sweat-first bet up to $1,000. Make every moment more this season with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21-plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700 or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. 
Let's dig now into NFL week number eight and see what my numbers are saying uh, at the across the NFL for this week. We'll recap last week after this later on. And it's a bit scary looking at these week eight lines and saying, I'm okay buying into two of the most disappointing teams in the NFL so far this year. And those two teams I am betting this week, that's the Buccaneers and the Packers. For the Bucs, I want the money line right now. That's plus 102 at FanDuel right now. It's plus 105 elsewhere, so shop around on that. But my traditional model, the one that blends a prior with 2022 data, has Tampa Bay favored by 1.6 points in this game. The 2022 only model really does like Baltimore a lot. Um, and it thinks they're due for some positive regression. But even in that one, it does view this as being strictly a toss up. So plus 102, I think makes sense to combine what those two models are saying. So I'm fine being on the Buccaneers here. Their early down efficiency, the passing efficiency has still been good. That's been dragged down by how bad they've been running the football. But we've seen them recently just kind of not running at all. And I know the Panthers game was bad, but the Mike Evans drop was there. There were some other things that could have broken their way that would have made that game look a lot better. So I think the Bucs will bounce back soon. I'm fine betting on that here with this Thursday night game. Now, it is the Sleepy Tom narrative, so we got to worry about that for sure. But I do think that the Bucs undervaluing the money line at plus 102 or plus 105. You can find that uh, outside of FanDuel. As to the Packers, they are 10 and a half point underdogs at FanDuel facing off with the Buffalo Bills. You can get that at 11 and a half, uh, at least this morning you could at BetMGM. So shop around this one too. And, you know, they're not playing very well, but I think this number is a bit too much. Um, They're still throwing the ball well on early downs. The Packers are. And that, to me, says this offense could perk back up. Both of my models say the Bills should be heavily favored here. The traditional model that I use has 8.32 points in favor of Buffalo. It's 7.21 in my 2022-only model. That model, the traditional model, doesn't backtest well on larger spreads, You know where it says, okay, this team is undervalued on a 10.5-point spread. It doesn't backtest that well because... We see negative game scripts. We see games get out of hand and that can lead to blowouts and that leads to a non-cover. So I want to make that very clear that the the model doesn't back test well in these kinds of games. But I think the Packers can keep this one pretty close. They're in desperation mode right now. Backs against the wall. Bills can have a buy for sure. But I think the Packers are undervalued at this number and kind of similar to the the Bucks and the Ravens teams do for progression as the year goes along. Packers money line is also plus 430 at Caesars. I'm showing a pretty good amount of value in that too. It's 385 at FanDuel, not as interested there. We're getting 10 and a half, uh means we're getting across 10. I think that's enough uh to me to for me to bite on the Packers despite the fact again things can get out of hand in super negative scripts. So I do like the Packers here taking the plus 10 and a half. If you can get 11 and a half, take that as well. The bills are a scary team to bet against. My model has them in a tier of their own for 2022 only just because how good their defense has been. But I will ride at the Packers here at plus 10 and a half. One money line my numbers like is the Bengals. Now, this number has been moving throughout the day. As of right now at FanDuel, it is minus 180. With it still being there, I do still show value. It's 166 this morning. So shop around, check all available books, and see what number you can get on the Bengals money line. But even at 180, I do still show some value. I've got the Bengals money line at 60 or win odds 67.1%. And uh, the implied odds at 180 are 64.3%. So still about uh, three percentage points of value there. Uh, The spread is minus three, but that's also minus 120 or minus 118. I'd rather get the flexibility and take the money line here, despite the movement it has had. It seems like the Bengals are figuring things out in offense. Their offense used to be super, super predictable, where if they were in shotgun, they were throwing. If they were under center, they were going to run. And they've said, okay, we just won't go under center at all. We'll be shotgun 95% and kind of take away that predictability of the offense. It's really helped. And it's not just that. I think that's definitely helped. But also just having T. Higgins healthy. This offense has been a a different unit when he's been healthy this year. So my traditional model says uh, the Bengals should be favored by 5.38 points here. I'm not opposed to uh, agreeing with that. They're up to eighth in my power rankings in my 2022 only model. And that one also does have a lot of weight in the struggles they had earlier on this year. So even though my 2022 only model says, you know, not as enthusiastic about betting the Bengals here, 
I'm okay going against that and riding with the money line here at minus 180. I would get that as soon as you can because it's been moving uh, even throughout this morning. So check out available books to see what you can get that number at and take that one. So the ones uh, I am betting right now, uh, the Bengals money line minus 180. I do like uh, the Packers plus 10 and a half and 11 and a half. You can get that. And I like the uh, Buccaneers money line at plus 105. So some offense that have had struggles this year, but good quarterbacks for all three. And I'm okay buying into those as we enter week number eight. One where I'm not betting uh, right now is uh, Tennessee minus one and a half. I'm guessing this number is a one and a half because of the Ryan Tannehill injury. He was in a walking boot after the game. He sounded like he made it sound as though that was just because it, felt better than walking around without the boots. So I'm, I think he'll still play, but not totally sure. If you were to get a read that Ryan Tano will be good to go for this game, I would take the minus one and a half on Tennessee and bet them there. But I don't know. I'm not really sure what the situation is there. This was, I think, three and a half earlier uh, uh, on Monday. So seeing him move to one and a half is concerning. So if you get a read the Tannehill play, it stays at one and a half. I would take the Titans but not betting that now because of the Tannehill situation. The other I'm not betting, despite showing value in my model, is Pittsburgh plus 10.5. Um, my model liked Pittsburgh last week too, which I should have taken. I did not. Um, they did cover against Miami. I ignored it. Uh, my 2022 only model says this number is pretty fair at 10.5. And as mentioned, my numbers don't back test as well when backing teams that are heavy underdogs on the spread. So I'll pass on that one. Uh, I think Pitts or, uh, Philadelphia is a very good team. I'm not looking to bet against him, especially not with Pittsburgh. I respect Mike Tomlin a lot. I think that he's a very good coach and can overcome a lot of key deficits. But for me, it's too big. So passing up on Tennessee for now, passing up on Pittsburgh, I think almost regardless. Uh, but I will take the Bucks money line, Bengals money line, and the Packers plus 10 and a half against the Bills. We'll talk more about uh, week eight on Thursday with Ryan Williams getting his read on this week's games and also... We'll talk some props with J.J. Zacharyson on Friday. So plenty more to come on week eight here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Before we close up for today, they've got to go back to last week and recap how things went here on the show. On the college football side of things, Ed's bet last week was on Texas A&M minus three against South Carolina. And that one did close at three. South Carolina, though, got out to a 17-0 lead in the first quarter. Texas A&M clawed their way back. Uh, was a three-point game entry in the fourth quarter, but... A lot of wonkiness, a snap off a helmet. Uh, it was a really weird game. Uh, they did wind up losing outright. So no cover there. Some weird weirdness going on South Carolina's side. They didn't play particularly well, but they won the game and they did cover. So uh, no win on that one. My week effectively got bailed out by the Seahawks, not just on the show bets, but also like my actual bets because NASCAR didn't go particularly well either. So kind of got bailed out uh, by the Seahawks. I had uh, that Charger Seahawks team under 51 and a half. It did close at 51, so a bit of value, but that game went over by 10 points. I also had Colts Titans over 42 and a half. That one features 29 points, and then Matt Ryan got benched. So clearly, bad read by me. But the one money line or spread that I had was the Seahawks money line. That was plus 250 when we spoke on Tuesday. Closed all the way down at plus 188. So a lot of movements. They did wind up winning. They looked really good. So the two totals, probably bad process and bad results, but the money line in the Seahawks, I think good process and good results. So I felt good about that, um, just kind of bailing me out uh, with the Seahawks there. So thankfully, Geno Smith is there to have my back uh, and bail me out on what could have been a rough week. JJ Zach Racing hit both of his yardage props. He had Robert Tunyon under 32 and a half and PJ Walker over 151.5. Tunyon actually caught the final play of the game, started a lateral, and it almost skewered JJ for no reason. Like it was a good bet and he was going to win and he did win. Uh, but because Tony finished right at 32, but almost got super, super unlucky with that lateral at the end. That one did hit by a half yard. So good job by JJ there. And PJ Walker played really well. In fact, he almost played too well because they were ahead and didn't have to throw, but he still got over 151 and a half, finished at 177. So a uh, couple close calls for JJ, almost, again, too good. Uh, but luckily, both those did wind up hitting as well. Good process, good results there for him. JJ talked about unders in the Jets-Broncos game. He wanted unders on the Denver backfield and the Jets pass catchers. If people overreacted to news that week, 
No Jets pass catcher had more than 24 yards outside of Michael Carter. No Broncos back had more than 33 yards rushing or 51 yards from scrimmage. So likely a successful strategy too, depending on what the numbers you got there once things opened in that regard. Anytime touchdowns for JJ were Nico Collins and Sonny Michelle, and those did not hit, but good week across the board for JJ, hitting on the yardage props and nailing his situations to monitor that he discussed. Ryan Williams at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Nailed it again this past week. He was six and one on Sunday. The lone loss was the Ravens minus six and a half. He had the Chiefs minus two and a half. Seahawks plus six. The Seahawks charges over 51 and a half. Uh, Raiders minus seven. Bucks Panthers under 40 and a half. And the Jets Broncos under 40 and a half as well. Then last night, Ryan did miss a total under 40 and a half. Um, he also had the Pats defense for an anytime touchdown and Ramondre Stevenson over 63 and a half rushing yards. But he had Khalil Herbert. Anytime touchdown, plus 550. He scored on that screen. He said, hey, I mean, they're going to ride the hot hand, and this gap between Herbert and Montgomery is too big. And that proved to be true. Uh, Herbert got a lot of work, scored that screen, so got the anytime touchdown at plus 550. He also had Equinemia St. Brown uh, over 13 and a half receiving yards. So good week by Ryan, good year by Ryan, honestly, uh, and a good way to, to – to end things there. So hopefully um, things are well for you this past week uh, of following our stuff. Again, Ryan nailed it. JJ, good job. Um, hopefully got the Seahawks money line as well. Feeling pretty good there. Hoping to have a good week again this week. Nervous buying into some bad offenses. But again, I trust what the numbers are saying here. I trust the underlying data and I think we'll be on a good foot for week number eight. As mentioned, we'll talk more about week number eight on Thursday. First, though, college football coming up tomorrow afternoon, most likely on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and on the FanDuel YouTube page after that. So go subscribe both those places, the FanDuel YouTube page and the Covering the Spread podcast feed to get the, these shows as they go live each and every day. Big thank you once again to Rob Friedman. Check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. And thank you to him for tuning in, uh, coming in on with us throughout this entire year. Blast talking to him every single week, picking his brain on pitching. Who better to give us insights on uh, that side of the baseball world? We'll see how the World Series plays out. Maybe we'll talk more about baseball uh, next Tuesday, too, depending on how things uh, look on my end. Maybe give what my money line model is saying on that one. We'll see about that. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in. Good luck to you with your bets across uh, the NBA, NHL, and, of course, NFL for this week as well. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down college football week number nine. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs> 